Hey, how y'all doing? This is Ken. Sorry we haven't been able to get out in the boat lately. It's just been bad weather and we haven't had a chance between scheduling and the weather. It hasn't happened. Okay, today's video is gonna be about a couple things. It's gonna be about, one, it's gonna be about lighting about the difference between the bright sunlight and not bright sunlight. I got a day where I actually got some, some photos of Osprey when it was raining. So I'm gonna, compare, I'm gonna show you the comparison of how flat one is compared to another. And uh, it's also gonna be about retouching that photo and the fact that I shoot in raw makes it a lot easier. And just a little bit in Lightroom and then I'm gonna go into Photoshop because remember I promised I was gonna do some Photoshop stuff and this is gonna be part of it. <laughs> Okay, so this is the file where I was outside doing some B-roll and Osprey flew by and it was raining. I mean, you can really see it's raining here. You can see right here, you can see the little drops, rain in his wings. And that one's not too bad. There's a few, I haven't actually called all these photos. Most of them are pretty good though. And I haven't really, this one's obviously not. It's a little blurry. Um, this one's pretty good, nice and sharp. You know, and there's a few of them in here. And I did do a little retouching in Lightroom with a couple of them here, just a little bit, just to kind of get a, you know, a little bit better idea of what I was gonna do for this video. And so we're gonna to go to a comparison. So I'm gonna to go to collections. I already set this up earlier. Oh, we got two photos. This was taken on a bright day. As you can see, it's nice and bright, you know, and if you zoom in, you can see there's nice contrast, there's really nice focus, there's no noise, you know. And what you need to understand about something here, this is the photo we're gonna use. And the reason is because of this. It's 200 ISO, all of them are 400 millimeters because I have a 400 millimeter prime lens, 5.6 f-stop, one one thousandth of a second shutter speed. Okay, so you can see how this image looks. Now, this was taken on a rainy day, and you need to see something here right off the bat. 200 ISO, same lens, 5.6 f-stop, one one thousandths. But look at the difference in this image. All right, so let's go back to the other file. And this is, this is kind of like what I always say. It, I know, the rule of thumb is not to shoot in bright light. I mean, if you go, if you're doing portrait photography, you don't want to shoot somebody in a bright light with the crazy highlights and everything else. But when you're shooting wildlife, it's not always that bad because the light, if you get the light behind you and you don't get it be, you know, behind the animal, what you can't always make that choice. But if you, if you can, you're going to get a much better, uh, much higher detail image out of it all right so first thing we're going to do i'm going to pick a photo i'm going to pick one of these i don't know which one i'm going to use. Let's see what this one looks like let's get something a little more deep oh, that's pretty good I like that one okay we're going to use this photo here first thing i'm going to do i'm going to make a copy create a virtual copy second thing i'm going to do i'm going to take it to the develop module go back to the grid uh, this view here and I think what I'm gonna do first is crop it in. I'm gonna crop it in because I don't really wanna mess with all this background. Crop it in. Oops, not that much. Like that, all right. Let's do this again, I don't like that. Uh, bring this one in one more. This one down, or this one up. This one up. That's better. All right. First thing, lens correction. Now, I didn't see any chromatic aberration in here, so I'm not going to worry too much about chromatic aberration, but I'm going to turn it on anyway. And that helps a little bit. That add, automatically that added instant contrast, 
which is, this is the problem with this is very flat because there's not much contrast because there's not much bright light. But there's, there's some contrast, but it's not nowhere near as good as one of those other images. Now, second thing I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna check the white balance. This was a cloudy day. So I'm gonna put cloudy on there and now we got some color coming out. It looks really nice. Add a little more contrast. Just to separate him from the background. Uh, let's see if I can bring these shadows up maybe a little bit. Yeah, you get more color out of these out of these feathers there. Not that much. Right about not that much. Right about uh, right about there. 17. Uh, I'm gonna check this dehaze and see if I can get a little bit. Sometimes this will bring some good contrast out. Yeah, add, add a little dimension, a little depth. See, it's adding a little more dimension, a little depth. And that's at 19, vibrance. So that'll bring the colors out in these feathers. And there we go. Now that's about all you really need to do, for the most part, in Lightroom. The other thing you can do is, if you want to, you can add a little more detail. You can also do this. You can do a little masking. You hold the Alt key down, go to the masking right here. And this is in the detail panel. And just turn it, just move it, slide it over. And wherever it's black, it's not gonna add any detail. All right? So just do it again to see what we get. Wherever it's black, it's not gonna add, it's not gonna add any. What it's gonna do is it's gonna sharpen the edges a little bit. You can do a little bit more. You can do the same thing with this the amount and it just kind of it, it does the same thing it shows you contrast more than anything and that pretty much brought that animal out pretty good i love the little blur in the wingtips i like that that shows motion and that's a fairly decent image right there now let's go into photoshop so immediately we go into photoshop and bring this in Give it a minute to load. First thing you gotta do, you gotta copy it. I just drag it down here and make another copy. Otherwise, it won't let you do half of what you need to do. Now, second thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna dodge and burn it. Now, dodge and burn is nothing more than darkening a section or lightening the section. The way it's done, I have a button here that has a, uh, an action. And the way it's done, a curve layer. Bring it down or you bring it up. Go to the other curve layer, which is the, the dodge layer. It's brought up. You're just bringing the whole exposure up a little bit. And then you use a brush. So you go B, gives you a brush. All right, and I'll make sure it's not the pen tool, but it's a brush, brush tool. Now, typically what I would do is check it, make sure I got, I got this one as pressure. because I use a, I use a pen. It's not, I don't use the mouse, so I use that a lot but you don't have to, it's up to you. You can use any soft round. I just have one that you can do with pressure. First thing I do is this. Now I'm on the dodge layer, which means I'm gonna lighten it. So what I wanna do is lighten sections that are light and darken settings that are shadows. It's real simple. And you can also adjust your opacity. For instance, I'll typically drop it down to 50%. Here we go. I'm gonna bring some of this up right here, some of this white on him or her, I don't really know. What this will do is add a little bit of dimension. It'll, it'll add a little bit of depth and a little, uh, it won't look so flat, is what I'm saying. And it's on a mask, so if you change it to a black, if you hit X, watch this, you hit X, change it to black, now I can cover it up if I want. I can go here and cover it right back up and it just takes it right off. Or I can add it on. However, I want to do it. Very simple with a mask. And that's what I'm doing. I'm not going to have to do a lot because there's not that much of an image here. That's pretty good. I mean, this is really quick. I'm not, you know, I'm not trying to get this published or anything. I'm just showing you how to do burning 
dodge and burn on a uh, on an animal. Anyway, that's what I did with that. Now I'm just gonna bring it up to this layer. I'm gonna close this as a group. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna sharpen it. Now I, I have to make a copy to do that first. And then this is nothing more than a high pass. But I got it already set up in a little button here. It's an action. And typically what I'll do for this, I'll turn it up really high, uh, like five. All right, around five or so. I'm gonna get to five. I'm gonna... And I can always just do this. Okay, so 5.50. This is also set up where it has a mask, a layer, a layer mask. So it's only going to be where I, where I choose to put it. Now I got this set at 49, so I'm going to take it up to 75, and I'm going to bring this eye in a little bit. Now, there's a couple other ways to do this, but for animals, I find my, mainly this is all you really got to do. <clears throat> now I'm going to take it down to about 24, and I'm going to bring some more detail out. And I'm just basically adjusting the opacity of this high pass so that I can just get this detail out a little bit in these wings and the uh, feathers and a little bit too much processing going on there, but uh, there's still another option and I'll show you that in a second. Okay, so you see I brought the detail out. Now it looks a lot more three-dimensional. I put some shadows and some light in it, kind of adjusted the lighting and that's what I did. And uh, you can see the mask, I can pause, I push on Alt, uh, click on the layer mask and it'll show you where I put what I've done. It shows you exactly what I've done. Do the same thing and it'll go away. All right, now that's how we did it. Let me see this eye again. Yeah, see the eye? All right. And that's all you have to do. And basically that image is done. It's a little high process. See, it started bringing in, see these, these artifacts in here? This is because I, the high pass process is so much, it's just too much. So what we do is you take this out. Just go on here in opacity. You're on this mask and you just bring it down where you want it. Well, now it looks better to me. It doesn't look so processed. It's, it's a little too much, it's a little artifacts. You can see the rain. You can see the rain in, in, in right here, the raindrops. <laughs> looks like there's even a little drop of, of water on his beak or her. I don't know exactly too. Uh, we'll put detail. What you want to do now is make a merge visible. The way to do that with the key command is Control Alt Shift E, and it'll make a merge visible. But I have a button that I can do it with right here. It's already it's a um, action. It does the same thing. Now, if you get back in the Lightroom, just go to File, Save, and it'll save, and it's saving now. And then you can compare them. So this is the cropped image that we took in there, here. And this is the, the retouched one. You can see that it doesn't really have as much detail. The colors ain't quite as bright. And this one, you can see it's brightened up a little bit. There's a little more detail in it. Just looks a little bit better. And that is basically all you have to do to retouch these photos. Doesn't take a lot, but all right. So that's basically all I have to do to retouch. And thank you very much for watching. I try and keep this video as quick, as short as I can. And all right. Please, if you don't mind, subscribe! And uh, it, it really helps us a lot. I mean, you know, those YouTubers, we just kind of like, you know, winging it here. <laughs> and, and we're just doing the best we can. So please subscribe, please come back. And I thank you so much for coming and visiting my channel. Please come again. All I want to do is give you some good informative stuff for y'all to help you out when you're out there in the field taking pictures of eagles or, or bears or whatever you take pictures of. And this is Ken out. 
See you later. <laughs>